All right. Hello, Fortinos, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is uh, August 28th, 2024. All right. I keep saying it's the last one. It's the last one. Brothers and sisters, it's the last one. It is the last one. The final date is the second option that we saw at the year's end. It was the one that most people believed was going to be the date because the year's end isn't at the beginning of Tabernacles. It is at the seventh day, at the end of the seventh day of Tabernacles. I briefly spoke in it about how um, it could be the beginning or it could be the end. But then I spoke about how we have in the revelation of the end of days, the revelation that brought us all the way back to the fractal of the big picture of creation that proved to us we already had the understanding of it. But what you're going to witness today that I've been working on the last two days when it came to me, I didn't want to do the video earlier. I've told other people, I've shared about it with some people, but I wanted to get it done at a particular time, make sure these things were put together in order to crystal clear show you guys how it happens and why the Lord led in the spirit, waited to reveal to us at the end and why in 2024. Because you're going to see what happens in 2024 in this alignment of time does not happen again for another 30 years. You'll remember, we'll talk about it a little bit as we get further into it, how this, we knew it teaching here, how I showed where the moon was off and how this year in the Hebrew month of Savan, everything with the sun and the moon lines back up in order. Well, that was part of the revelation. Good thing I didn't end up deleting this video because of that because it directly is connected and i'm going to prove it to you with scripture i'm going to prove it to you with the sun moon and stars i'm going to take it all the way back to the creation and you're going to see that the sun the sun and the moon are all where they were as it was in the beginning that's the point where it was in the beginning you see because in the beginning is where the end is and whoever finds it finds the end when they found the beginning but we thought we had it we thought we had it in relation to a count that was 50 days from the ninth of Av to to elul 29 and then tishri would begin it but i'm also going to break down and explain that something that i also touched in the last video that we now know it couldn't have literally been at the ninth of Av. Because the ninth of Av, we are in the 70th year. Which means if we're in the 70th year, and for 70 years they had to observe the fasting in the morning of the 5th and 7th month, how could they have observed the fasting in the morning of the 5th month in the 70th year when that was supposed to be the first attack after the pre-trip? It didn't line up. Which means there was something more to come that would reveal to us we needed that understanding to understand the above 50 days, to understand it was attack one followed by attack two after 50 days, but it wasn't specifically those days. And we could not come to the understanding of it. When we began to understand the revelation of, of Taurus in the, in the 50 days and 14 years in the revelation of Taurus, had we been given the understanding in 2020, 2021, 22, 23, to what is going to be revealed here today, we would have never understood it. And as I was talking with our brother Mark today, he, he, he understood. It would have been thrown out. We would have, I would have disregarded it because it made no sense in any other year. But why waiting so late? Why do we have to wait to get past the ninth of Av and all these things before we can get to this understanding? Well, because on top of all of that, we needed the understanding of this last teaching to understand that Leah, the winter wheat, still goes into September. We needed to understand that the Lord God's year's end isn't, 
you know, uh, uh, New Year of Trees, isn't New Year of Animals, isn't the uh, um, Nissan, right? Uh, the, the end of the year and then Nissan one and then the end of Alul and Tishri one. Are those all year's ends? Of course they are. They are all a year end. And even to the Lord, some of those are the year's end. But they are not specifically what the Lord in his word tells us is the year's end. That was the final piece. But had this come to be understood at any other year past in the seven years we've been doing this, at any other year, it would have been disregarded because in no other year for I don't know how many years back, I've only gone back a couple years back because the only thing that matters is going forward. It doesn't happen again for another 30 years. So brothers and sisters, get ready, hold tight. September 3rd, as we've spoken about that second to the third, is the end of the true seventh Sabbath and the third into the fourth. Remember, Hebrew goes from evening to evening is the beginning of the 50 day count to the year's end and the beginning of the 14 years. This is the end of all ends to the very tip toe end of the 70th year count. We have diligently sought and searched the 70th year as no other ministry that I'm aware of out of the tens of thousands of people that have watched at any point across the earth in different languages. We are the only ministry. Now, there might be other ministries, but we know that everybody stopped tracking and searching the 70th year understanding after 2017 into 2018. They all just set it aside. Well, I was about to set it aside too. I was about to set it aside after the last one to the ninth, uh, to the 15th of Av on the Hebrew calendar. I mean, uh, of, uh, uh, yeah, of Av on the Hebrew calendar because I could no longer say, Lord, where is this count to the year's end for which 50 has to come first? Without it, I started thinking, well, what am I going to do, Lord? I can go around and, you know, maybe I'll start traveling across Canada and then eventually start traveling further and start teaching the revelation of the Gospels in the 14 years. Bring about the truth of the revelation. But guess what happens? I would have to do it without ever being giving, uh, without ever being able to give an understanding of 70 years. I would have to skip gleaned over Zechariah chapter 1, these 70 years. Zechariah chapter 1, those 70 years. In Jeremiah, don't worry about the 70. In, in uh, Psalms 90 and 10, forget about it. And just forget about it like everybody else has. Well, does that make sense to you? The only ministry that has diligently sought and searched the revelation of understanding 70 years in the ministry that has been given the revelation of the open books to reveal the revelation of the end of days, I couldn't let it go. I knew there had to be something still in this 70th year, and I wasn't going to let it go till it was done. Well, now I've been given it. And I believe this is the end. This is the end. We already know what the date is. <clears throat> but we had an issue because as much as we can figure out the date by going to the end and counting backwards, it still left us scratching our heads with how to properly count the seven Sabbaths that would get us to the final 50 days. Because scripture didn't tell us like the, the gospel of, of Thomas, right? The gospel of Thomas didn't say whoever finds the end finds the beginning. The Gospel of Thomas told us whoever finds the beginning finds the end. For in the beginning, there the end is. And though we did have it in part, though it was necessary to understand it in Taurus, the story wasn't over. 
because where I began that count wasn't as it was in the beginning. Oh, it's in Taurus, but it was off where I began the count. So brothers and sisters, buckle up, hold on tight, because today is the revelation of the beginning and the end and the end of the beginning, <laughs> all wrapped into one. All right? So with that, as we get this going, I'm not going to go into my usual longer spiel about it, but anybody that's new to the ministry, you're just coming across this now. You're going to hear many things, as you've already heard, the, who the Gospels are speaking to. All of these differences within the synoptic Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, you're going to realize in the end of days, it's Luke, Mark, Matthew, and they're speaking to three different groups of people. That's why there are, quote unquote, discrepancies within the same conversation of stories. It's because it is prophecy all laced throughout the Gospels. It is filled. It's not just about the discourses. It is about all of the stories in the Gospels that are prophetically weaved in the end of days. And that's what you're going to begin to understand when you understand, when you go to watch the first four videos in this intro series, or you go to ministryrevealed.com, go to the intro series and watch the first four videos there. And then you're also going to understand the 14 years in a portion called above. You're going to see that pre, mid, and post is all true. Luke, Mark, and Matthew is how it plays out. You're going to see how this was all missed. And the answer is because we've all been taught from the Gospel of Matthew. So if you're new, you're free to watch this teaching. No problem. Understand it. Because the focus is on the season and time and the final understanding of the seven Sabbaths to the end of the winter wheat Leah to the year's end in a 50-day count, which is the above portion that starts with the pre-trib escape of the Bride of Christ, who is the Leah winter wheat at true feast of weeks. You're going to see that the Lord God revealed and confirmed 50 and Taurus for us, not because every single calendar going forward is going to be off by that two months and or to that two months and change. That's not the purpose. It was for him to reveal to us the beginning. That was the purpose. The beginning. That's the purpose. Because this year, as you're going to see, the beginning as it was in the beginning gives us this count to September 3rd. And the final 50 days to the year's end only this year for the next 30 years in a from the beginning in to a Taurus count calendar. Sorry, sir, into the Hebrew calendar year's end. You see, remember when Jesus was here, the calendars were off by the sun was off by a month or a month and change. Yet Jesus was still observing Passover. And tabernacles. Which means even though the calendars are off because the sun has moved by over two months now. Where Passover is, Passover is. Where tabernacles is, tabernacles is. But the Lord specifically has revealed to us and led us to seek and search out as it was in the beginning. To find the end so we would understand where the beginning is of the end will be and it's said even to those who find it will not taste of death so brothers and sisters let's get this party started and just as i get it started before we really start going into this i'm going to share a couple little things or one specific thing in a couple little clips here because remember the story of kamala the the meaning of kamala being lotus we shared that a sister over 30 years ago had a dream vision of Kamala, who would have only been about 28 or so at the time in law school. She saw her at a podium as this woman, adult, who, who she had no idea who she was. And when she was standing at this podium, well, which is very interesting, because now outside of the DNC, they're hiding her from doing any communications of anything. Probably because she's not very good, right? And what happens is in this vision, she saw 
who she then came to know as Kamala when she was running for vice president. And she had her, she was standing at the podium and her face changed. And when her face changed, there was a massive earthquake. People fell into it and they started fleeing everywhere. Well, we came to understand that Kamala's name means Lotus. We shared on this a couple of years ago. Well, listen to what this guy says. Very, very insightful. And then I'm going to show you guys something that blew my mind. Somebody had shared it. I believe it was in the forum. And I went to look and I could not believe it. It is now in our face. Okay. But listen to this guy on Kamala Harris. He makes Kamala qualified to become the next president of the United States. She's not. She didn't, she didn't go through the voting process. They scared of the system, but I was, I was all by design. So how do you think it's even possible that she is now running for president when she wasn't even voted in because, to be the electoral? Good question. Because to, to be the person. Because it's part of prophecy. If you look at, uh, like Egyptian, Kamala means lotus flower. Out of the lotus flower comes the sun god rock. So what she's going to bring, she's going to bring what he wanted. Back in the day, the sun god, along with Akhenaten, they were the rulers of the dynasty back in the day. They're going to bring economic doom because what you have to do, you have to destroy it before you rebuild it. They... See, because she's going to destroy it before it gets rebuilt. We know this, right? We know this. And one of the other reasons I want to tie this in is, yes, he's aware that Kamala means Lotus as well. And we've shared on this. But it's also connected to our sister's vision. And we know that it's going to bring about destruction. And what did she see in the vision 30 years ago plus about Kamala? She brought destruction. It's this bringing it about. But what else is connected here? Well, he starts talking about the sun god Ra. Okay. And what are we going to be talking about here? We're going to be talking about the sun and how the sun connected to the beginning of the year. Because the sun is for seasons. Now, of course, no, I'm not talking about the sun god Ra. And even though... The ancient Egyptians and, and, and Iranians and all of these guys, they were worshiping the sun god Ra. The purpose of what I'm going to be sharing is to show what the beginning of the year was and what the Lord is leading us to today to show us where the beginning was. And it only happens this year for the next 30 years. <clears throat> so with this, this understanding that we've known about the Lotus, right? Let's have another look at this. We shared it recently, but let's do a reminder. Remember that? 70, and it's not quite complete, but the apple here kind of brings it to an end. And up comes the lotus flower right near the end of... 70. This was a big deal for us because everything begins 50 days before 70 ends, which we now know is the Lord God's year's end. And who has now come on the scene, not voted in, placed on purpose, whose name Kamala means Lotus? I mean, it is so blatantly obvious to those who are watching it is so obvious how close we are let alone what's going on with israel and iran that is going to happen exactly at the time it's supposed to happen right after the pre-trib escape of the bride of christ well check this out you ready for this they now call her Lotus for POTUS, Lotus for POTUS everywhere. Everybody's decreeing and crying out, Lotus for POTUS. Check this out. They're wearing shirts, brothers and sisters. Lotus flower with the Lotus for POTUS. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? The Lotus is blooming. It is the blossoming of the lotus who is Kamala at the tail end of the 70th year. And what was I saying earlier? That we diligently continued to seek and search the revelation of 70 years 
I wouldn't give it up. It's, it's not because of me. It is because of the spirit who is leading. Who is leading this preparation of a group of people. This Elijah company of people being prepared in the revelation of Jesus Christ so that when he comes to let them know that they're staying behind to serve him, they will be ready. They won't be surprised. They won't be shocked. They will have been prepared. I could have easily just not continued to search the 70 years over all these years. I can't explain why I just wanted to, why I continued to, except I knew within the revelation of prophecy that the 70 years ending is the end of 70. And the 14 years would then begin. We knew it. It's all throughout scripture. And so even now over these last week or two, this last week or two, when I felt like just saying, forget it. You know, hang up the cleats. There's no more kicking the understanding of 70 years down the road anymore. It's over. The spirit in me would not let me rest. There had to be something. There was still something more to the Lord God's year's end before the 70 years would come to an end and the 14 years would begin. We know the answer to 70 to 80. 70 to 80 is the seven years of seals, the first three years of trumpets, then soon cut off. Soon is about six months, three and a half years. Puts us at mid-trumpets. At mid-trumpets, Messiah is cut off. The temple has been rebuilt in the first three and a half years of trumpets. Now, they're, now he's cut off. And the we fly away, as we've revealed for years, is the Revelation 12, 14, flying away into the wilderness. That has nothing to do with the pre-trib or mid-trib. It is the mid-portion of trumpet judgments. It is Matthew 24, when they flee away into the wilderness. As Revelation 12, 14, on the wings of an eagle, and they're there for a time and times and half a time. Sorry, Leon and Mary Lou, I'll get back to you guys. They're just calling right now, which is very sweet because I only hear from them once every few months with a phone call, sometimes several months. So I'll get back to you guys. Sorry, little side note. So we know that they fly away for the final one plus two plus a half is three and a half years. This is the revelation of 14 years. We've known it for years. It has never changed. The only difficulty was the 70 years. Well, let me show you something, brothers and sisters. Let's go to our Shemitah year chart. Okay? We know from Leah that there are seven easy years, we call them. It doesn't mean everybody's life was easy. Of course not. But compared to tribulation, these are the seven easy years. Okay? This Shemitah, Sabbath year Shemitah count, was a count all the way back, that goes all the way back to the birth of Christ. It connects all the way back to his declaration of the Jubilee in Luke chapter 4. And we counted the Sabbaths to the Jubilees all the way through for over about 2,000 years. And when we did, the final Jubilee ended coming in 2038-2039. So in these Shemitahs, we know that what? There's seven years of seals, seven years of trumpets. And that there were seven easy years, like Jacob working for Leah. Well, ending up getting Leah, but expecting Rachel. These are the seven first easy years. And then we have what? Seven years of seals. And then we have seven years of trumpets. And then the Jubilee. Well, the Jubilee has always been called what? The new beginning. The new beginning. It's always been referenced as the eighth day. You'll also remember from Deuteronomy. Could have put that over there. In Deuteronomy chapter 16, the revelation of Deuteronomy to show the revelation of the final seven years and seven years for 14 years and the 15th year, which is also a picture of 
the big picture, which is 7771 for 22 years, but we take out the seven easy and we have the seven years of seals, seven years of trumpets, and the new beginning for the Jubilee. Well, in Deuteronomy chapter 16, what did we understand from this? We know it's the revelation of 717. Three times in a year, they're to be they're to present themselves to the Lord. Okay. We know that it starts with Feast of Weeks, which is Leah. Leah went first. It is the Feast of Weeks. But the Feast of Weeks begins its count on a date that we're not given a day, a, a day for. And the seven Sabbaths begin from that point at the date we don't know and end at a date we don't know. At no point is the Feast of First Fruits and the Feast of Weeks, at no point in Scripture are we given a date. But we are told to count from such time that you begin to put the sickle to the corn, which means wheat, because Feast of Weeks is wheat. Okay? And this is what we're going to get into, specifically clarify for this year. But we know it begins with Leah. Leah is winter wheat. Leah is the older before the younger. And Leah is the one that goes first. So we know it's Feast of Weeks. Then we know it's seven days as seven years of the seals judgments. Then it's what? Tabernacles, the Feast of Booths. And what is Tabernacles? It is seven days as the seven years of trumpet judgments. And in, in uh, 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 Leviticus 23, it tells us that the end of the seven days of, tab of tabernacles as the seven years of trumpets is the solemn assembly new beginning. And what did we know? That the seven years of seals as the bread of affliction, as the seven days of unleavened bread, it's actually six days. And then on the seventh day is the solemn assembly. Well, what do we get? We have six years of seals as the six days of unleavened bread. And the Lord returns at the end of the sixth year, destroys the enemies. And the seventh year is the time of the solemn assembly. It's the seventh year where the 144,000 are sealed. The, about the middle of the year is when the great multitude rapture happens. And then he makes a covenant with all nations at the end of that year. So you've got what? Six days as six years and the seventh day as the seventh year solemn assembly. Then you've got the seven years of trumpet judgments, which are the seven years of taber seven days of tabernacles in the seven days as seven years of tabernacles. Guess what? There's no solemn assembly on the seventh day. Like there is for unleavened bread. Well, guess what? In the seven years of tabernacles or the seven days of tabernacles as the seven years of trumpet judgments, what happens? The Lord, after this, the city and the streets and the temple are rebuilt, he's cut off at the ten and a half year mark. Satan has his two and a half years. And at the end of the sixth year or the start of the seventh year, the Lord returns feet down for as it was in Matthew's discourse, as it was in the days of Noah. So what's happening? He's going to bring about all of the destruction. He's going to go against Satan. He's going to bind Satan. Uh, the beast and the false prophet are going to be the first two cast into the lake of fire. And it's going to be the treading of the grapes. Which means what? Well, that certainly is no solemn assembly in the seventh year like it is on the seventh day to the seventh year of seals as it is to unleavened bread. So he's still bringing about all of the destruction of the enemies here. So for all the seven days as seven years, there's no solemn assembly yet. And what does Leviticus chapter 23 tell us after the seven days of tabernacles? The eighth day is the solemn assembly and the eighth day is called what? The new beginning. So do you understand what, what this is already showing us in what we knew for years now? That the end of the 14 years 
at the end of it, because the 14th year of tribulation or the seventh year of trumpet judgments represents what? It represents the seventh day of tabernacles. Seven days as seven years. The seventh day of tabernacles represents what? The end of tribulation and the eighth day of tabernacles represents the new beginning as the jubilee we already had the understanding in the revelations of years to the days of unleavened bread and tabernacles which we've known for a long time now that the last day the end of the 14th year the end of tribulation is a picture of the last day of tabernacles the seventh day of tabernacles and when it is over as the years end as we're talking about today in the picture of the 14 years or the 21 year big picture of tribulation the end of the seventh year is the end of tribulation like the end of the seventh day of tabernacles is the year's end well, you know what? It gets even crazier than that. Remember the whole story of the fractal. Remember the story of the fractal. The story of the fractal is in the beginning. Okay? In the beginning. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2 are called gap theory. We know from the story of the end of days, from the story of Jacob with Leah and Rachel and the cattle and so forth, that what's really happened is that gap theory is a picture of the first seven days of creation, which to the Lord God, they would have been like seven days. If we were there in time, they would have been in the dimension of time like 7,000 years. But we're only given two verses. And those two verses, it's like Jesus was so excited to create when he was creating that spirit portion, when he was creating that time, he was so excited. And all we get in the story is two verses. But we know that they're the portion of the sons of God, right? Because the spirit of God was there. Just like Romans. In Romans chapter 8, those who have the spirit of God are the sons of God. And what do we know? It's the same story. It's the exact same typology in the story of Jacob. When he's excited and he's going to work the first seven years, he's going to work seven years thinking he's working for Rachel. But really, he's working for Leah because the older goes before the younger, the winter wheat before the spring wheat. So what does he do? He serves seven years for Rachel, but they seemed unto him what? But a few days for the love that he had for her. So just like the creation of the gap theory, where we're only given two verses for this entire thing, which to the Lord would have been seven days, but to us in the dimension of time would have seemed as 7,000 years. It's the story of Jacob. They were like seven years, like the end of days, seven years, the easy ones we call them, but they flew by like days because he was so excited. Well, in the end of days, what do those days represent? They represent the final 50 before the end of 70. Because then you've got what? Then you've got the seven years of seals. Not only are they a picture of unleavened bread's days, but what also are they a picture of? They're now the picture of Genesis chapter 1, the seven days of creation. That's why... Uh, as you guys know from 2 Peter 3 8, don't be ignorant, Paul says, of this, uh, or Peter, don't be ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, comma, and a thousand years is as a day. Which means those days of creation in Genesis 1, those seven days, are all one day to the Lord. But if we were there in the dimension of time, they would have all been as 7,000 years to us, as 1,000 years each. So what are we seeing in this picture? You're seeing this picture build up, right? 
There's the first seven that flew by like days. They were the gap theory, the spirit portion. And then we're in the seven days of creation, which to the Lord God would have been days. But to us, if we were there in the time dimension, would have been as 7,000 years. They are a picture of the seven years of seals. The, the left behind, the world, the Mark group, pre is Luke, mid is Mark, post is Matthew. The bride of Christ, the world, the Gentiles, the, the church that wasn't ready, the, the, the Gentiles grafted in with the house of Israel and then the house of Judah. So then what happens? Well, then from Adam, we are now in the thousands, but to the Lord God, they are still as days. So in all of this, you've got seven days, seven days, seven days to the Lord God. And when the seven days are over, what is it? It's the new heavens and the new earth of eternity, which to the Lord God would be the 22nd day. But to us, here we are living in the thousands and we're approaching the end of the 6,000th. And that would have been what? 7,000, 7,000, 6,000, and then the millennial reign, 7,000. What happens after the millennial reign? The new beginning. So what we're seeing is the end of day's picture of seven easy years for Luke, and then the bride goes. Seven years of seals, solemn assembly in the seventh year, and then seven years of trumpets. And when the seven years are over, you have... The millennial reign, which is a picture of what? It's a picture of tabernacles. The seven years of trumpet judgments are the seven days of tabernacles, as I just showed you. So what do you think they represent in the big picture? To the Lord God, they're the seven days of tabernacles. But in the thousand years, look, we're coming to the end of 20,000 years. But to the Lord God, they were all days. So we're living in the time of tabernacles to the Lord God. And when it's over, it's the new beginning, the 22nd thousandth year. But in a tabernacles count of days or years, it's seven and then the eighth day of eternity, which is new beginning. Do you, know, do you understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> do you understand how everything is a fractal? The the year, the days, the thousands, the the years of the end of days, everything is a fractal picture of the whole story. And in every single one of them, we have understood that the 14th year is a picture of the seventh day of tabernacles. And when it ends, it's the end of tabernacles and the end of tribulation and the eighth day is the new beginning of the jubilee which means all these years that we have had this revelation and these understandings the end was always at the end of the seventh day of tabernacles and the new beginning was always the eighth day of tabernacles to the Lord God. It has been here in our revelations the entire storyline through. Isn't that mind-blowing? I was just, what? That's why in, in um, Deuteronomy 16, when the revelation was finally revealed in the understanding of three times a year to the Lord, I was in awe when I understood that Feast of Weeks was first, and it's only a one-day event, but there's a seven-day wedding with it. And then we had what? Seven, which was six and one, and then seven, which was seven, and then the eighth day. It was the understanding that we knew for years. And then in the last teaching, I showed you that the solemn assembly is only mentioned twice with the feasts. One of them is in the seventh day, just like 
the seventh year of seals. And the other one is in Leviticus chapter 23, which is on the eighth day of tabernacles. The eighth day of tabernacles is the other solemn assembly in the feast days. It's literally when the great multitude when the great multitude rapture will happen in the seventh year as the type of seven days and will be when they're brought back from the wilderness after the 14th year because they were taken at mid trumpets for a time and time and half a time, which means it'll be after the 14th year of tribulation at the solemn assembly of the Jubilee on the great eighth day. We have already known. This is why having finally come to the understanding that the Lord's God, the Lord God's year's end is the last day of tabernacles and the eighth day of tabernacles is the new beginning was so powerful because it was already in all of our charts. It was already in all of the discussions we've had over this time in relation to what we knew about unleavened bread and tabernacles to seals and trumpets. So you want to talk about a confirmation in this realization, this understanding that this is the year's end and this is the new beginning, which will be the start of the 14 years. Well, guess what happens when we go in reverse 50 days? This, now remember, the Jew count, the Jewish calendar goes from here to here, okay? But we're just saying right here because where the number is, okay? This is the beginning of the 50 days. Before this 50 days begins, whether sunset to sunset or whether it's sunrise to sunrise, this begins the 50 days which means just before, right as the 50 days is about to start, somewhere in here, whether evening to evening or whether sunrise to sunrise, the bride of Christ is gone in this time frame. In fact, because the moon might be off, don't worry about the moon. You're going to understand this in a moment. We can even say, let's look in here, okay? Let's be comfortable. Let's keep watch. This is the time frame. Am I telling you, thus saith the Lord? No, I, I still haven't received the thus saith the Lord ever in this ministry. But I have been blessed with the revelation of understanding through the leading of the Spirit. And this is the final 50 day count to a year's end that we have you can say secretly unknowingly understood for years now having come to clarity and all we did was say we needed to find the year's end and we counted 50 days going back but you know what happened when we did that, right? We had an issue. Sure, it was great. We found the year's end. We know that the Feast of Weeks and the Feast of Ingathering can't be together. It was that you would observe the Feast of the fe First Fruits of the Wheat Harvest, comma, and separately observe the Feast of Ingathering at the year's end. The Feast of Ingathering isn't ours. It's not for us. The Feast of Weeks of the first fruits of the weed harvest. That is for us. That is the Leia group. That is the one that goes right as the 50 days is about to start. But to understand where it was, we needed to understand the Lord God's year's end. And you want to talk about knowing it now? You want to talk about having understood it and it been in the entire storyline the entire way through? Now we've got it. Now we know that the year's end is Tishri 21. We know it. 
And when we went back, as I said, 50 days, we see that Elul 1 is the beginning of the 50 days. Now, what did we do in this? Well, we went in reverse, didn't we? We found the end, which was needed. We needed to understand the Lord God's true end because clearly this wasn't his end. This wasn't his end. It was an end. We needed to get to this one so that we can get to the next point where he would show us his end. That was the issue. But it wasn't without purpose. But then what we've done is we just found the end and went back to see where the beginning would be. But that's not we were, what we were told to do, was it? In the Gospel of Thomas, this has been very exciting for us. This is extremely exciting for us. Because these are the sayings of Jesus that Thomas had recorded in questions that the disciples and apostles had asked Jesus. And in, in verse 18, it says, The disciples asked Jesus, Tell us how our end will be. Jesus said, Have you discovered then the beginning? Have you discovered the beginning that you look for the end? Well, we, we have discovered the beginning. And from this beginning that we were led through the confirmation of the Holy Ghost. Do you guys understand? I was telling this to Mark today. Do you understand in seven years, out of all of the revelations that we've been led in through the leading of the Spirit, only once in all of them did the Father tell the Holy Ghost, confirm this one for him. Go give him a physical confirmation, which you guys know came through Joe Dell. Why? Out of all of the incredible revelations, hundreds, thousands, of revelations and their connections over seven years only one time was a physical confirmation given well as i've told you before it's because of how important that revelation was of 5014 the representative of the of the name noon which is the 14th letter of the hebrew alphabet and it's numerically the number 50. i was going to delete that video the following day, in my prayer, if I didn't get confirmation. And though it wasn't the time, the understanding in that video from March 10th, 2020, was so important that the Father told the Holy Ghost to confirm that one for us. Why? Why? Because through the leading of it, through the diligence and the seeking and searching in it, we would find the beginning so that we could understand and find and know the end. Because in the beginning, which we were led to was Taurus, and has proven out many times over the years, we know the history tells us everything, it, it, it was Taurus in the beginning. That whoever finds the beginning, will then be able to find the end. But what makes it so exciting? Blessed is he who will take his place in the beginning. He will know the end and will not experience death. Do you realize the Elijah company? Elijah didn't experience death, right? But we know there's a remnant group, that there is a group through this people that will be having their necks put on the line. But it didn't say, whoever finds the end finds the beginning. It said, whoever finds the beginning finds the end. So as much as going to the end and going back 50 days revealed to us the beginning, it really didn't. It just so happened to in 2024. It just so happened to in 2024. Because in all the other years, I'm going to show you just a glimpse of it. They do not equal the same time. 
because you know what was missing? And we had some brothers and sisters that caught this. How do we get to September 3rd in a seven Sabbath count when the sickle is put to the wheat? Hello. Isn't that exactly what we needed? We had to find the understanding that was connected to the beginning of creation with the sun and the moon in their place to get to the place where we could count seven Sabbaths from when the sickle is put to the wheat. The only way we can do that, even though this is the time, it left us scratching our heads as to how we got there in a seven Sabbath count. That leaves us scratching our heads. Because isn't this the beginning? Isn't this where it was in the beginning? Nope. No, it wasn't. And you know what? We knew it. We knew it, but it just it didn't reveal itself. It just it just didn't dawn on us. It didn't dawn on me. Just because. This is when the sun is in Taurus and the moon comes over it. That doesn't mean that was the beginning. You see, I was saying that, you see, the, the moon is in Taurus. And so now we're in Taurus. The sun is there and the moon came with it. The moon is there. That's the beginning. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Don't we know what the beginning was already? The beginning was the 16th of Savan. In the beginning was the 16th of Savan. Hello. It was the 16th of Savan. And what's Jesus' birthday? The third month, 15th day. Jesus was born on the 15th of the third month, which is Savan. And he was, even though the calendars are, or the, the sun is off, this is when Jesus was born. But if this was the beginning, and we have to be in Taurus, which is Savan, which we are, and this isn't the beginning, this is just the beginning of the, of the Jews' month, the Hebrew month, the beginning of creation was right here, in Taurus, right here. This was the beginning of creation. This was day one. We now call it the 16th day of Savan because of what it represented, but what was it? In the beginning. It was Jesus day one in the beginning. Jesus was the first, the beginning. The first of the first fruits. Jesus was the beginning. The Hebrew calendar would tell us the 16th day of the third month now in Taurus, but it was the beginning. There's no verses before in the beginning. This was the beginning. Well, what's the 15th of Savan? The 15th of Savan, which goes from here to here, is. Of course, Jesus' birthday. Do you know what else is going on at this time? It's also the solstice. Do you know what else it is at this time? It's also the full moon. Do you remember what I mentioned earlier? What I had mentioned earlier? That this connection to this video that I was going to take down, we counted the moon and that the moon's portion of time being off. You guys remember that? That even though maybe some of you didn't understand how to count it, we have a count all the way back from December 2022, which I carried forward into 2024. And when the Jews add a 13th month, well, you already know that's messed up, don't you? 
You already know it's messed up because that proves that they were falling behind every month because it's 11 and a quarter days of the moon falling back over a year. So about one, one day, excuse me, one day per month, which means if they don't add or catch up by adding a month every two to three years, they would be in the middle of December. They would be next, they would be the previous year in the fall. They would be so off with the moon. And this year, when they added a 29 days to catch up with the moon, they added 29, which they always do every two to three years. This time, they had three days too many, approximately, about, you know, two and a half to three days too many. And what did I say? Then Nissan catches up one, IR catches up two, and Savan catches up that two and a half, that about three days. Remember I told you that? Go watch the video. Well, what do we have right here this year? We have the birth of Christ, the day one as it was in the beginning, the summer solstice in Taurus at the full moon. Uh, can you say hello? This will not happen again for 30 years. For 30 years. Now, why does it matter? <laughs> Remember, this is the beginning. This can't be the beginning. This was the beginning. And in the beginning of creation, which is Genesis 1.1, when the sun and the moon were created. Now, our brother Roy sent me this video of this lady, and I watched and I thought, okay, it was kind of interesting. And then as I started pondering all these things, it all started to make sense. Listen to what it says. In Genesis 1.14, it said, And God said, Let there be light in the firmament of the heaven to, to, to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and for years. Which one do you think represents signs? The moon. The blood moons, the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the lunar eclipses. Which one do you think represents seasons? It's only the sun. Remember Enoch's calendar? Enoch's calendar runs on a 364-day year divided by seasons. Seasons. Four seasons, and they are based off the sun, not the moon. They were both in the firmament, yet we know that they have both fallen. We know that when they were in the firmament, that the beginning of the year started in Taurus. And I'm going to show that to you even some more. Not only did the year begin in Taurus, but it began when the sun was in Taurus at what is now the solstice, but back then was the equinox. Because remember what happened? The sun has gone off course because what? The sun has fallen out of its place. The sun is no longer in the firmament. And so what's happened? It has sped up, as we know, over thousands of years. What happened with the moon? It's no longer in the firmament. So it's gone out of whack and is out of whack for decades, years and years at a time. But about every 27, this time you could see 30 times, 30 years, they both fall into place. Just as it was in the beginning for day one with the moon at what was then the solstice, uh, uh, the equinox, but now is the solstice. Well, let me show you something about that. What if maybe it was the solstice back then, but because the sun has sped up, they're calling it the equinox now. Okay. We call it what? Spring to fall. Is that what the Lord God called it? Or did the Lord God call it 
winter, summer and winter. Do you know there is no spring and no fall in Scripture? There's reference to spring with flowers and so forth growing. But do you know there is no spring and autumn or fall mentioned in Scripture? All of it is summer and winter. And it is probably that where spring is now to the end of fall, that all of that is summer. But what was it before? As you guys all know, it began in Taurus. And in Genesis 8.22, it tells us, while the earth remains seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night. Summer and winter. What has the Lord God been trying to tell us? Taurus, 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 Taurus. Taurus is the beginning. Taurus, Taurus is the beginning. Taurus is where it all started. In the beginning. It was Taurus in the beginning. Let's see what, what other things tell us about Taurus. Watch this. You guys remember this about Taurus, right? Of course, we've talked about this. To the early Hebrews, Taurus, the first constellation in the, in the Zodiac, and consequently, it was represented by the first letter of the alphabet, Aleph. And what's Jesus called? He's called Aleph, right? He's called the beginning and the end. He is called the Aleph and the Tav. So in Taurus, he was the beginning. And in Taurus, the beginning is right here. Not right here. Right here. At what? What was the quote-unquote spring, which it should be summer, Equinox, it is now what? The solstice. What do we know about the solstice? We know that in Enoch's day, this is all a, a breakdown of Enoch. In Enoch's day, Enoch tells us that the Hebrew, the, sorry, that the Enoch calendar is 364 days for a year, right? Four seasons. But do you know what happens? We don't live in a 364-day year, do we? That's because we live in a 365 and about a quarter. So look what happens. For example, the end of the 364-day year, the solar year is in error 1.24 days. That is because a tr the true year is 365 and a quarter days long. So after 364 years, or after the 364-day year, the New Year's Day will drop one and a quarter days in the true solar year. Wait, how long? This right here is the solar day. This is the new year of the solar day. And how far away is it? Let me show you. In Jerusalem, okay, this is IDT, is uh, Israel daylight time, okay? It's Israel's time. June 20th, at 11.50 p.m., okay? June 20th at 11.50 p.m. So the Jews' day goes from evening to evening. So where was? Right here. 11.50, whatever it was, p.m. right here was the new year. But in the new year, what happens? Well, it was also what? It was also connected to Jesus' birthday. But what happens? Well, it's 365 and a quarter, not 364. So there's a what? About a day and a quarter approximately that gets dropped. So what would we call it? We can't just drop it. So what would it be called? It would be called day zero. You, like Jesus' birth, the, the beginning. Okay? It's like Jesus' birth. So where is day one? Right here. Of course it's right there. It's exactly as it was in the beginning. Taurus, right here. And so what do we have? With having to make up that one day and a quarter because of a solar year, it now becomes day zero, and the 16th of Savan is now day one. So remember, the sun is where it should be, as it was in the beginning. On the day it was in the beginning, 
for day one in Taurus. And so is the moon. So is the moon. Remember, that was that teaching uh, two, three teachings ago. This, this is the evidence. This is the proof of that count of the understanding of the cycle of the moon being off. And only so many years does it actually fall back in place where it should. With the sun at what is now the solstice, but what was the equinox. Are you tracking this? So we have the beginning and the sun and the moon. Well, what moon do we have? We have the full moon. Now, I'm not going to go down the rabbit trail of what this is telling us. But we have the full moon, which is June 22nd at 4.07 p.m. So where is that? Remember what I said the difference was? About a day and a quarter. So where's day one? The 16th of Savan. Day one, exactly as it was in the beginning of creation. Do you know that when the sun and the moon were created, do you think, now of course the sun was, was full because it was always full. But do you think when the Lord spoke the sun and the moon into existence, do you think the moon was dark moon? He speaks the moon into existence and nothing's there? Does that make any sense to anybody? He speaks these two great lights into existence. And as he speaks these two great lights into existence, one of them was turned off. <laughs> of course not. Which means at the creation of the sun and the moon, the sun obviously was shining bright, and so was the moon. Which means what? Which means in the beginning, at the time of the sun in its position in Taurus, the moon was also full. Boom, baby. Did you hear that? In Taurus, in the beginning, the sun and the moon full on day one of creation. Are you understanding what I'm getting at? Well, if not, don't worry. I'm going to tell you what the story is now. This, Savan 16, on the Hebrew calendar and on the Gregorian calendar of June 22nd. Yes, it goes from 15 to 16 or the 21st to the 22nd for the Jews. But remember, it may go morning to morning. Okay? This is what we've been talking about for a month now. We now know where day one of creation is. We know that there is a day zero because of the 365 and the quarter from a 364 calendar. Now guess what happens? This, hello, this is day one of the year. Remember this with Taurus? Well, let's have a read. Taurus marked the point of the vernal summer equinox in the Calathotic, in the Bronze Age, from 4 BC to 1700 BC. Wait, what? Taurus marked the vernal equinox spring. They began their year at the equinox in Taurus. That was the beginning of the year. Oh, let, let's go a little bit further, right? Remember the ancient Egyptians? This is what we were talking about. Why were they always observing the bull? Well, because they were worshiping the sun instead of the true God. But the sun was in its proper place, right? Look at this. Egyptians celebrated the new beginning with the festival of whatever this is, the opening of the year, which it was in Taurus at what we now call, it would be the equivalent in our day, the summer solstice. We see it everywhere. Where's another one here? Um, 
In Egypt, for instance, the year began with the annual flood of the Nile. <clears throat> it landed in it. It talked about it. See, now they talk about it here. It's at the solstice. Um, those in the know, however, must have been aware that in the uh, that it was originally the seasonally observed full moon at the day of the equinox. Hmm. At the day of the full moon, at the equinox, or the solstice now, because it's, we're talking about in Taurus, as it was in the beginning, and the beginning was the 16th day of the third month on the current Hebrew calendar. It had to begin full. It had to begin full. He didn't have one light turned off when he said, let there be light. And there were two great lights in the firmament. One wasn't turned off. And the 16th day of the third month, which we know from the Hebrew calendar, is the beginning of creation. If this is the beginning of creation, why was I saying this was... Why was I saying this is the beginning of the year? When scripture told us that the beginning of creation was the 16th of Savan, which I'm not saying it was the 16th of Savan, I'm saying it was the beginning of creation. There was nothing before this date, which was the beginning. So if this is the beginning, and the sun and the moon are in their perfect position, which we've understood from the revelation of the counting of the moon, and we could take it back to Genesis and we could show it. And we could show the history of it. Look at this one. <clears throat> Look at this one. Here is the calendar. This is an ancient Iranian calendar. Okay, the solar Hij Hijri calendar. It's called the most accurate calendar. It says the ancient Iranian solar calendar is one of the oldest calendars in the world, as well as the most accurate solar calendar in use today. Ready for this? In ancient Iranian New Year's Day, the ancient Iranian New Year's Day, which is called uh, Norwuz, always falls on the March equinox. Remember, it was the equinox back then where Taurus was. Now we had to find the beginning. The Holy Ghost led us and confirmed to us the revelation that as it was in the beginning is Taurus. And as it was in the beginning of Taurus, the beginning, the first day of the year, the equinox, and the year began at the sun in Taurus with the full moon at what was the equinox was their beginning of the year. I was calling this the beginning. Because it was when Taurus, uh, it was when the sun entered Taurus. But was it as it was in the beginning? No, because the moon is dark. That's not how it was in the beginning. The moon was full. It was a great light. It wasn't turned off. And we even know. Do you get it? In the beginning. There is nothing before in the beginning. And we know that this was the representation of in the beginning. So if nothing was before this, how could this have been the beginning if this was in the beginning? <laughs> Just now it makes sense. Now a light bulb went off. And so guess what happens? Now I'm going to show you. I'm going to get into this calendar. This is day one. Right? This is the day that had to be made up. This is the actual equinox or now solstice itself in Taurus. And this is day one. Whether you go evening to evening or whether we go sunrise to sunrise. Okay? We understand this. So now watch what happens. And don't worry if you can't track it. I'm going to show you the calendar. This calendar built in with this count. Okay? I had our sister Tammy work on it for us. We had to go back and forth a few times and then boom, nailed it right down and added the word so everybody could track it. It is crystal clear. And guess what? It is absolutely perfect. That's why I would hope that the Lord would give us a thus say it the Lord to make this final declaration. But it didn't happen yet. And I, as you know, I don't think it will. 
because we know through this group that was prepared for the end that the end would begin till a group was prepared to reveal and given the revelation of the end to bring it about and in this group they were not given a thus saith the lord the lord god didn't give dreams didn't give visions didn't give audibles to this to the to this group as as the one leading the group through which the revelation came it all came through the revelation of the word by the leading of the spirit so i would love thus saith the lord to give that one final thus saith the lord or as you guys know uh, our brother john from seven years ago show up again right at the tail end of this i would be pumped and i would let you guys know right away if you see another teaching come up and it's just like a few minutes long you might want to get excited and hold on to your seats because that's what it will be okay i i'm hopeful for it i'm prayerful for it but i'm not expectant if, if you if i could put it that way so now watch what happens and don't worry i'm going to show you this way but then i'm going to show it to you crystal clearly on a calendar this is day one <laughs> i keep shaking my head i just want to smack myself in the head because knowing this is day one and it, there was nothing before it in the beginning why would i have thought this was the beginning ah! you see but this is why i take it back to what i had said at the beginning the spirit purposely <clears throat> allowed us down this trail led us down this trail to understand these things so that when the time comes the final piece can be given because had it been in any other year as i'm going to show you it would have never added up and i would have disregarded it why did the holy ghost give that confirmation of that 5014 and let us in the understanding of taurus and all of this because had i not got a confirmation on that teaching I would have deleted that video and disregarded the whole thing. But it was that teaching from that video that the Holy Ghost confirmed that brought about the entirety of the revelation over the last four years and change that gave us the understanding of the beginning being Taurus, leading us to the winter wheat harvest count when the sickle is put to the winter wheat that the seven Sabbath counts begin. And what do we know about the, the, the winter wheat harvest? It literally began late May for some, and in for others, it even went to starting into late July. It's generally always in Savan, okay? Or, or sorry, in the Gregorian calendar month of June, okay? Which you could also say is generally always in Savan as well. Well, I want you to notice something. It still is Savan. To the first week of july to the end of the first week of july it's still savan the question was if this isn't where the count begins and it starts here the, 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 where's the count lord how can we go from the end this year of tabernacles and come to a count of 50 days that starts right here and this be the end of the seventh sabbath how could that be in a count that we would be doing from early July when it equals nothing in our understanding of as it was in the beginning? Now we know where the beginning was. This was not the beginning. This was the beginning. And now watch what happens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14. This is Passover. It, now remember, this count, as I've said many times over the last several months, this count of understanding the beginning was so that we could understand the beginning to understand the end. For in the beginning, there the end is. But it will still play out over the coming years where the sun is off course because that's where these things are taking place remember when christ was here he was born on the third day 15th month with the sun being off by a month he in a month and change he he did observe passover we have passover in the new testament and tabernacles in the new testament 
though it was off by a month and change. They still observed them at those times, which means the observations of the times of Passover and tabernacles and of those things are going to happen on those dates on the Hebrew calendar. But for the pre-trip remnant group being prepared to understand in this group the beginning to find the end for in the beginning there the end is would be revealed to this group and that end that beginning i should say that beginning will reveal to us what the end its purpose, the reason the Father, I believe, gave it to the Holy Ghost to confirm it to us was so that we would get to this point of discovering where specifically in Taurus this was. That this beginning would lead us to the understanding of the end. That's the purpose. Not to say that it's going to continue two to three months off going forward. No. It was to reveal to us the beginning so we could find the end. And this is it. This would then be the equivalent of Passover. This would be the beginning of unleavened bread for seven days. This would then be the Sabbath. And from the Sabbath after, what does it say? Then shall you number seven Sabbaths. One, two. I'm not going to point them out to you. I'm going to show them to you in a moment. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In an evening to evening, this is the seventh Sabbath. And in an evening to evening, this would line up with this then being the beginning of 50 because what do we know from the Gospel of John chapter 20? Mary Magdalene, very early in the morning, early in the morning while it was yet dawn, so right before sunrise. You see? Right before sunrise. Actually, that might even be, right? That it would have to be a day to day. So this is why I'm saying whether this is the seventh Sabbath or whether this is the seventh Sabbath in an evening to evening or in a morning to morning. And this begins the 50 days evening to evening or whether it's morning to morning. This right here, this right here is the seventh Sabbath. And in this time is the beginning of the 50 days, either at evening or at sunrise, either at evening, the seventh Sabbath or at sunrise, the seventh Sabbath. And when this seventh Sabbath is over, either right here or in a sunrise to sunrise, the pre-trib is going to happen. Which means the pre-trib is right in here. Right in here, in the evening of the third, or, excuse me, and this is Jerusalem time, or very early in the morning, Jerusalem time, on the 4th, which to us to us over here in, in the West would be in the evening of the 3rd as well. Or the other one would be early uh, in late morning of the 3rd. So we're looking late morning of the 3rd or evening of the 3rd is the pre-trib Bride of Christ and the beginning of the 14 years. Want me to show it to you? We were able to get there this year by going to the end. But do you know that we were only able to get there this year? That if we did this in any other year, watch this. In any other year, it doesn't equal. And for the next 30 years, it doesn't equal it. Okay? Not until 2054 does it happen again. So where's the last day of the year? Right here. Okay, Tishri, 21st day of Tishri was October 3rd last year. You go back 50 days, 
when you go back 50 days, of course, you're going to get to Elul chapter 1. Uh, sorry, uh, Elul, day, the first day of Elul. Where is it? It's August 18th. It's August 18th. We can't have a seven Sabbath count from, from the understanding of as it was in the beginning of, of sorry, as it was in the beginning in Savan. We can't get that count because where's the sun? The sun doesn't happen till down here. Yet the 15th to the 16th is over here. We don't have a full moon connected here so that we can give it as it was in the beginning. This is supposed to be as it was in the beginning. But the sun is down here, and they've got the full moon as well. But they're missing the sun. We had to find the sun. And when we see that history showed us that it was the equinox in Taurus that began the year, it doesn't happen. It didn't happen last year. It doesn't happen... For 30 more years, except for 2024. So let me show you again. This is day one. Just as it was in the beginning. It is impossible for this to be day one. He did not turn the light off when he made the two great lights and put them in the firmament. They both had to be at their position. And in 2024... Just as was revealed in the count with the moon being off connection, it is exactly where it should be with the sun as it was in the beginning. This is day one as it was in the beginning. Now, let me show it to you. Okay, watch this. June 2024. Okay, June 2024. There's your Saturday, 1st of June. And it's the 24th of IR. I don't think we've got 24th of IR, but there's your 1st of June, Saturday, June 2024. June 7th, Hebrew calendar, first day of Savan. June 7th, Hebrew calendar, first day of Savan. Okay? It's a copy of this Hebrew Gregorian calendar. Now we get to what? Solstice. Well, remember, solstice goes evening to evening for the Jews, right? Day one goes from evening to evening. But it, just like the Hebrew calendar, we just place it on this one. So whether it's day to day or whether it's evening to evening, you see what I'm saying? Just like we were showing a moment ago. Here it is right here. So this is day zero. This is that 365. This is that one and a quarter portion that had to be made up, which becomes day zero. So where is day one? Right here. Month one. Day 1, 16th of Savan, June 22nd, okay? Just like I just showed you. June 22nd, 16th of Savan, in June 2024, 22nd, 16th of Savan, the beginning, okay? The beginning, day 1, month 1, as I'm showing you, as I've explained, is exactly the time it was in the beginning of creation in Taurus. So now what are we going to do? Now we're going to count. Day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There's Passover. So true Passover in what the Lord is revealing to us to begin our count as it was in the beginning. Okay? This is where Passover would have been to Enoch. This is where Passover would have been to Moses. Okay, before it really all started going off course, as it was in the beginning. So here we are, July 5th. There's July 5th, as I told you, 29th of Savan. On this count from in the beginning is the equivalent of Passover. Then we've got the beginning of unleavened bread, Saturday, July 6th. Saturday, July 6th, 30th of Savan on the Hebrew calendar. 30th of Savan on the Hebrew calendar, you've now got your seven days of unleavened bread, and then you've got your Sabbath after. And what do we do? Now we begin to count. Okay, let's go to the Hebrew calendar. Look what happened with their Passover. 
okay seven days and then you've got your continued final piece of unleavened bread so what do we do we see that unleavened bread and then what do we do now we count seven sabbaths so where's the first sabbath after the sabbath after unleavened bread right here on our days you see it's still the same days it's the 8th the 15th the 22nd and the 29th day of every month because of the moon right because of the moon and dark moon and so forth this is first sabbath so july 20th on our count that began as it was in the beginning month one day one on the hebrew calendar 16th of savan we end up with the first sabbath in a leviticus chapter uh, uh in a leviticus chapter 23 count here is first sabbath july 20th second sabbath now we're looking for the eighth there's the eighth second sabbath july 29th third sabbath 15th day august 5th uh 22nd day fourth sabbath august 12th 29th day fifth sabbath august 19th eighth day sixth sabbath august 27th what do we need seven sabbaths having put the sickle to the corn seventh sabbath and what are we in the hebrew calendar in the hebrew calendar you see when does the count begin after this period you have the unleavened bread so we make this count and we get to what the seventh sabbath 15th day on our calendar from in the beginning september 3rd did you catch that we went from realizing the year's end was either the start of tabernacles or the end having realized the real year's end is clearly the last day of tabernacles just like the 14 years to the jubilee just like the big picture of 21 to the 22nd just like the big picture of all of creation showed that the eighth day of tabernacles is the new beginning of everything it's the beginning of the 14 years it's the it's the end of the 14 years and the beginning of the jubilee it's the end of the 21,000 big year picture and it is the new heavens and new earth new beginning so we finally understood that to the lord god the year's end is the seventh day of tabernacles the end of the seventh day of tabernacles and the eighth day of tabernacles is the beginning of the 14 years so having found the end we went back 50 days because we know the 50 days revelation and it brought us back to the end of the seventh sabbath and the beginning of the 50 days that was all fine and dandy to do it in reverse but remember when i started this portion we couldn't understand a seven sabbath count from the end of of winter wheat that would take us to an understanding of october 3rd the seventh sabbath what was missing what was missing the beginning the beginning do you understand how straightforward this becomes i know you might have to take a lot in take some time study it rewind pause what comes before in the beginning nothing <laughs> there's nothing there was nothing before in the beginning jesus is the beginning so how could this have been the beginning that i was looking to count when in the beginning the moon was on with the sun and this was also the beginning of creation with christ there was nothing before this in all of creation which means what this on the current hebrew calendar in the beginning of creation was the beginning this was day one month one it was the beginning but it is now the 16th day 
of the third month on the Hebrew calendar. So all I have done is said, this is like saying day one, month one. It's like going back here and saying on the Hebrew calendar, day one, month one. You see, some of you are already catching it. I'm not going down this trail. But they call this day one, month one. The reality was, in history, it was at the beginning of creation. And when the sun and the moon were created, they were at their position in the ecliptic at the equinox, which is now the solstice for Taurus. And it was a full moon. Whoa. Whoa. And all I did was say, day one, month one, like it was in creation. And I counted the days on our calendar with the, with the Hebrew calendar so that we could keep track of these things so nobody's getting lost. And all I did was start counting the days. That's all I did. I don't know what triggered this. Something with the sun triggered this for me. And that's why I say it was spirit-led because I can't even recall what it was. Because I knew we had it from the end, but we had to find it from the beginning. So it was, it was something to do with the beginning that, that, that urged me in this connection with the sun. And then I realized the moon. And so when I did, all I did was started counting the days, like day one, month one, and found where Passover would have been, unleavened bread, where the seven Sabbaths were, then the count begins, and there's your first Sabbath, and then counted them as we do, the 8th, the, you know, the 29th, 8th, 15th, 29th, 8th, 15th, 20th, and did it as we always do. There's month two, day one, and continued the count. Just continued the count, as we have always done on the Hebrew calendar, which we already knew was off, and knew that on the 15th to the 16th this year, both the sun and the moon had fallen back in line, as I told you in that video, as it was in creation. Do you realize, this is what blows me away, because do you realize when I was explaining that to you in this teaching, and I was showing it to you, I explained it to you, I said that in Savan, in the Hebrew month of Savan, it all gets caught up again? As I, and, and what did I say? As it was in the beginning. Well, do you know what it was in the beginning? Two great lights. The moon wasn't turned off, the moon was turned on. Which means, in the beginning, there was nothing before it. And within it, with the sun and the moon being in their place, as they were in the proper position, it had to be what? I explained it was right here. But you know what? It didn't even dawn on me. That it was also the full moon. So in the place where I said the moon and the sun would be as they were in creation, in Taurus, where they were supposed to be, I was talking about the sun and the moon being in their proper place in Taurus. But when I did, it hadn't even dawned on me that not only were they in their proper place, but the moon was full like it was supposed to be. This is bananas. This is a count that had we not, in the last teaching, figured out the year's end, and been able to prove it with scripture and prove it with the revelation of the fractals and the 14 years and when it ends and that it was Deuteronomy and when it's over, it's the eighth day which proves the year's end, the end of the 14th year to the new beginning. Had that not been proven out in the last video and given us account back to here, I would have never been able to say, wait a second, how on earth is it possible that September 3rd ends up 
being the seventh Sabbath. The Lord will always answer our requests when we diligently seek and search them out. This was something that we have known to understand for years. And suddenly, we were just to cast it aside and say, whatever, it's just here, that's all. It's just here because somewhere in here is where the seven Sabbaths count. That's all. Really? Really? Believe me, that was kind of the, some of the thought process. Maybe not that kind of corniness, but that was kind of some of the thought process. Thinking, well, all right, whatever. This is the seventh Sabbath. There's your 50 days. The bang, that's what it is. Because that's the year's end, so we got it. But then we would just be left thinking, okay, we'll watch there, but everything else is off course and we don't understand how to get there. But so be it, Lord. That's where it is. We'll just accept it. Not for you guys. Not for me. Because he's given us the revelation. He's opened the books to us. He had to bring about the revelation of understanding it. And do you get now how only in 2024 the sun in its position, the moon in its position, as it was in Taurus in the beginning, could have only happened this year? I wasn't kidding when I, when I said only this year. Watch this. It doesn't happen till 2054 where the summer solstice is the 21st of June and it happens, look at this, at 554 a.m. in what? In a day of in Israel, right? Where it goes evening to evening. So let's go to 2054 June and look at where it is. Right here to right here. So where was it for us? It was really late at night right here, right? The 15th of Sivan. Really late at night for us right here in 2024. What will it be in 2054? It will be really early in the morning, so it would be like right in here. And when you do this count, again in 2054, you'll come to the exact same count as we did in 2024. And all of the years prior, I didn't go back many, many years prior, but I can assure you, go back and check if you want. They probably don't happen for years prior either. The Lord revealed this purposely through the Spirit in its perfect timing because it would have made no sense in any other year because in none of these other years did we have precisely as it was in the beginning the beginning the creation of the sun and the creation of the moon in their proper place in Taurus there was a reason the spirit held out there was a reason why the Lord didn't instruct the spirit sooner because I would have chucked it out as I would have chucked out the revelation of Taurus had it not been confirmed the way it was. And here we are with what? Just under a week to go. Just under a week to go. This is the seventh Sabbath. This is the beginning of 50 days, evening to evening or day to day, which means we're even closer to like six days left before we get here, right? Where are we? <clears throat> here we are right here, right now, August 28th on our calendar. August 28th, and the event will happen between here and early in the morning right here. Evening to evening or day to day because this is the end of the seventh half. So right here to right here, Sunset to sunset, or sunrise to sunrise. Now, did you notice something? This is the first of Elul, right? We've talked about the first of Elul. And you know what seemed a little bit off is that 
on the Hebrew calendar, you know, when we were thinking this was the seventh Sabbath, right? This was one of the possibilities because it would bring us to the beginning of the Feast of Tabernacles, and maybe that was the year's end. And what seemed really good is that you would have your seven-day wedding in heaven, and then the eighth day, the return of the Lord, would be at the first of Elul. And it seemed appropriate because it was it was the the king is in the field. So it sounded very fitting that the king would be in the field, and he starts it here, and this is where it was with Jonah and so forth, right? Well, it's believed that's where it was with Jonah. Okay? Not precisely known, same with, uh, with Enoch in the 40 days. It's just believed because there is a 40-day connection with the king is in the field. So th that is what really helped make this one to the beginning of Tabernacles as the year's end look really good. However, just assess what we were talking about. If the seven, day, the seven years of trumpets, as we shared earlier, are a picture from Deuteronomy of the seven years of ta uh, of the the seven days of tabernacles for the seven years of trumpets, then how could day one be the end? Hello, <laughs> you see how obvious it becomes. How could the beginning of the seven days of tabernacles, which are a picture of the seven years of trumpet judgments, be the end? at the start of the seven years of trumpets. You see, that instantly throws it out the window. When I saw that, I was like, oh, you know, not only is it obvious that it's the last day because this is the beginning everywhere, but it also shows that this clearly couldn't have been the last day because tabernacles, the seven days, represent the seven years of trumpets and the end of days is 14 years. So clearly, this isn't the end and this isn't the beginning. Hello. Well, now, seeing that that's not the eighth day and this picture of, of the king is in the field. Now, here's the thing. The king is going to be in the field in Elul, but he's not going to start on day one of Elul. Watch what happens. Okay? What else does Elul mean? and a representation of the first of Elul. Do you guys remember this? It's been years since I've talked about this because I never I never looked for an account going to Elul. You see, now it all lines up. Listen to what it's an acronym for. So the acronym for Elul is, you can pronounce this, represents this, and it's from the Song of Solomon's, uh, sorry, Song of Songs or Song of Solomon, chapter six, verse three. You wanna know what it means? I am, so here it is right here. I am my beloved's, and my beloved's is mine. What? Elul 1. Elul 1 represents, I am my beloved's, and my beloved's is mine on Elul 1, which is what? Escape day. The end of the seventh Sabbath, right at the time of Elul 1, is the escape day, and it's the time that is the acronym for I am my beloved's and my beloved's is mine. Well, do you remember this? Let's go have a look. It's in Song of Solomon, right? Or Song of Songs. It's right here in verse 3. I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. Well, brothers and sisters, are you ready for this? We know this story of Song of Solomon, don't we? Don't we know the story of Song of Solomon? Who it's speaking to? Darn right we do. Let's go to chapter 8. We've talked about this recently. We did a teaching a while back on it, right? What do we know about the and my breasts in verse 10? And my breasts are like towers. The word towers, like a pyramid of flowers, a bed of flowers, right? Like a woman's breast, like a tower called Migdal, which is tower. What do we know about this, brothers and sisters? Oh, yes, you guessed it. Remember, John, 20, uh, John chapter 20 is a circle. It's a loop. It begins the 50 and it ends the 14 or the end of the 13 to the 14th year. What do we know? The first day of the week came Mary Magdalene early. Look at this. It's dawn, which means it's going to be before daybreak. So 
if it's dawn and this is the seventh Sabbath, then it seems like the seventh Sabbath goes from day to day. And what's going to happen? Very early, or maybe what? You see, very early before sunrise, it's dawn. The escape of the bride right before sunrise on Elul 1. Who do we have? We have Mary Magdalene that we've done this teaching on. Mary Magdalene is the one there. You notice that it's only Mary Magdalene of the women in John's version? Because this is a picture of what? It's a picture of the pre-trib bride who is represented as the typology in Mary Magdalene. And Jesus says, I have not yet, don't touch me, I haven't yet ascended to the Father, right? And Mary goes and tells the others, this is a picture of the pre-trib, the Lord coming for the pre-trib bride and the remnant bride remaining as the disciples. Remember Mary Magdalene's name? Mary Magdalene's name comes from the Greek 3093. And it means tower. And it comes from the Hebrew 4026, which means Migdal, tower, pyramid like of breasts and a bed of flowers from Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 10, which is the story of the king and his bride. And we're told that the acronym for the month or the word Elul is my, I am my beloved's and my beloved's is mine. <clears throat> well, do you know what else that refers to, brothers and sisters? To that pre-trib bride of Christ? We know through Hosea, who we've been told in Romans chapter 9, starting in verse, oh, let's start first in 23. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of his mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. Even us, whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. As he saith also in Hosea, remember this is Hosea, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not my beloved. I am my beloved's, and my beloved's is mine, and my beloved's is mine. At Elul chapter 1, evening to evening, morning to morning, after the seventh Sabbath of the true end of the seventh Sabbath of the Feast of Weeks, which then brings us back to Numbers chapter 28, that tells us, when it's going to be observed. And in the day of the first fruits, this is the wheat harvest, right? This is the 1061. When you bring a new meat offering unto the Lord, when? After your weeks be out. After the weeks be out, the seventh Sabbath, it is Elul chapter one. I mean, sorry, Elul, the first of Elul and is represented by I am my beloved's, and my beloved's is mine. And from that date, from that count, we have this year, from as it was in the beginning, a seven Sabbath count to a 50 day count, we end up at the year's end, October 23rd, the 21st of Tishri. What's going to happen, brothers and sisters? You know the story. Pre-trib is going to be removed first. Then what's going to happen? Iran is going to attack and destroy Haifa and Tel Aviv. There will be a short Middle East war that will last for about seven days. And it will settle because they don't want to go full-out destruction of World War III, though it's coming. They're going to settle it within seven days. After those seven days, which is the seven-day wedding, the Gentile bride wedding, at the end of seven days, the Lord comes what? 
the Lord comes on the eighth day, exactly as we've taught in dozens of different teachings all throughout Scripture. He is returning as Jonah was to warn for 40 days. And he's going to do it on the eighth day when he returns from the wedding, as we have shown everywhere. And when is the eighth day? September 11. Just like the audible that our brother Steve received after a 40-day fast, he was rewarded when he asked the Lord, Lord, when are we going to see you? Or when am I going to see you? And he audibly heard 9-11. 9-11, brothers and sisters. And this is a brother who's been with us, I think, for about six years, for many, many, many years. He's been with us, and he told me about this a few years back. He audibly heard 9-11 after his 40-day fast and having asked the Lord. Do you understand why this is important? Because the pre-trib is gone right here. The pre-trib is gone at the end of the seventh Sabbath, right at around dawn. And then what happens? Well, not everybody goes pre-trib. Not everybody's going pre-trib. Remember, we've got a remnant, right? Those who are going pre-trib is this group. Is this everybody who is in Christ, spirit-filled? Like Romans 8 tells us, everybody spirit-filled in Christ is going pre-trib. But from among them, a remnant is being trained up and will remain. This group right here is the group going pre-trib. And I'm going to use this to remind everybody, let us not get caught up in this the elections in the U.S., in different things that are, that are trying to distract us and pull us away in these final moments. Don't get into arguments and distractions of this. Let's keep watching and praying and diligently seeking to be accounted worthy Let's read 34 through 26 of Luke 21. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with the suffering and drunkenness and cares of this life. So that day come upon you unawares. Don't be caught off guard. The, the elections don't mean anything. And as much as if there were elections and if this wasn't the time, you know, hopefully it would be Trump to, to bring things back. Whether you like them or don't like them. Whether you think he's good or a Christian or not, I don't really care. I'm not really concerned. I believe it's going to be Harris anyways. Because it's lotus time, brothers and sisters. It's lotus time. So I don't really care. Because I know where we are. So I'm going to keep watching, praying, and diligently seeking. That we're going to keep our focus on the Lord, lifting each other up, strengthening each other, sharing, doing what we need to do until and not be caught up in these things of the world that are going to try and distract us in this final push. Because it's going to come as a snare on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the son of man brothers and sisters we know that there are two groups one that goes pre-trib and from among them a portion that is chosen to remain those going to the kingdom of god right and those who are chosen to remain we know who they are let your loins be girded about and your lights burning and you yourselves like men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding. That when he comes and knocks, you will open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants who when the Lord comes and finds watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to eat and he will come and serve them. When? After the wedding. When we go to Revelation chapter 3. We know these guys, right? The very end of the Laodicean age in Luke chapter 12 is the evidence that the Lord is going to reveal to his servants that are going to remain. He is going to let them know 
before, right before he takes the pre-trib, he is going to let them know who's staying, that they will be ready when he returns from the wedding. And it's right at the end of the Laodicean age where we are given the information in Revelation 3, verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. What happened? Same with this one. When I return from the wedding, blessed are those servants who he finds watching, that when he knocks, they will open unto him and he will come and sit down and serve them and eat with them. Who is this group? They're, in, they're also in Luke chapter 14. We know the first group is being taken to the wedding. And we've taught over and over again. Anybody from among this group who has ever heard our teachings had better not go sit in the highest room of the third heaven. We are to sit in the lowest room of the third heaven when we get there to that wedding. And if we're to be honored and taken up higher, Somebody will come and get those people and take them higher. We are not to sit in the highest room and for the Lord or the somebody to tell us you're not supposed to be there and be kind of put to shame a bit and be having to go down to the lowest room. We are to sit in the lowest room and we know this ahead of time. But do you know what happens after the wedding? After the seven day wedding, there's a banquet. There's a banquet. So when we go into the KJV, here in Esword, we see the storyline. There's the wedding that we were just talking about, sitting in the lowest room when you're taken to that wedding. And when the seven-day wedding is over, the parable of the great banquet is only in Luke because this is the banquet that he's going to have with that remnant group who weren't taken to the wedding because they were chosen to serve and to remain with the Lord to serve him. These are the ones who will be part of the resurrection of the just. This is that banquet meal, as you guys all know, that he is going to have with them, as he said he would in Luke chapter 12, when he returns from the wedding. And the Lord is going to return from the wedding on September 11th, which will be the eighth day of which is after the seven-day wedding. We here are a group of people being prepared, having been given the revelation and the scriptures opening up to bring about the revealing of the end of days. And our brother, Steve, has been with us for many years from, from uh, uh, New Zealand, who received the audible after a 40-day fast that, we would, that he would or we would see him, 9-11, pre-trib, Nobody's going to see them pre-trib. The pre-trib are going to be taken like Enoch. Never having tasted a death, vanished. But a group is going to remain to be ready to open when he knocks on the eighth day. And what is he going to do? He's going to come and sup with them. They're going to eat and he's going to serve them. He's going to serve them and eat with them. Do you think a group who's been prepared this will be when we would see him. This is when he comes as the son of man, as Jonah was, to warn the world and Jerusalem that they're about to be compassed about and destroyed. Because what happens at the end of the 50th day? There's going to be an anointing of the Holy Ghost of what we call Acts 2.0. The Holy Ghost leaves this remnant group that was with the Lord, prepared with the Lord, their understanding opened, will now receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost and this power and this authority and this understanding that this people will have will be beyond anything that was ever given to the apostles, the disciples, the prophets, and all those guys before. Because it's going to be a time such as never was since the beginning of creation. They will go out from Jerusalem and Jerusalem will be attacked at the beginning, at the new beginning of the eighth day of tabernacles, the beginning of the 14 years, brothers and sisters. This is <coughs> the revelation of the end and the end of the 70 years. In the final 50 days 
before the 70th is complete when we have the lotus who has risen up. And what do we know? Who is this group? Here they are right here. Only in Luke 24, as you know that we read this, and he sat, he sat at meat with them. He took bread, blessed it, break it, and gave it to them. He sat with them and served them. And then what did he do? We come down further. He opens their understanding in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms concerning him. The things that were yet to be fulfilled. The prophecies that were still hidden. That we have been revealing. He will complete this story. And what does he do? Then he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. He is going to finish the story, guys. And this group will be his witnesses as Moses and the Elijahs. For which I believe we may have Moses and Elijahs here, but I believe we are the Elijah company, the remnant group prepared to put our necks on the line. To put our necks on the line, because who are we? This group, this Luke 24, this remnant group from among the bride, they are the Smyrna workers, who some will be cast into prison and some will be put to death. Some will be put to death and some cast into prison. But guess what? He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt by the second death. Why? Because the reward for the Luke remnant portion, the Luke 24, those that he told when he returns from the wedding to be prepared, when he knocks, they are the ones from Luke 14 that he has the banquet meal with after the wedding that he says will be part of the resurrection of the just. And those who will not be hurt of the second death are those who are going to be resurrected as Revelation 20 says, having put their necks on the line, having been the witness for Christ Jesus, will be resurrected to reign with them for a thousand years. They will be part of the rest of the first resurrection, but the rest of the dead will not live again until the thousand years are over. This first resurrection is the one on such the second death has no power. This group right here is the group from Revelation chapter 3. That when this is the tail end of the is of Laodicea that we're in right now, when they will be given that warning to be prepared when he returns to knock, and when the 14 years comes to an end, and that group who worked for him, who put their necks on the line, will then be resurrected to rule and reign with them, this is that verse for the end of the tribulation, when they will be resurrected to rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. And here is where they're told, to him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me in my throne. You see, because they're co-heirs with Christ. Having been the little rocks, the little light, having been the little lambs, as Christ is the lamb, is the light, is the cornerstone. They will serve him and take part in what he took part having put their necks on the line as Christ so that they will take part in being glorified as he was. And their reward is to rule and reign with them a thousand years and they will sit in his throne with him in his throne even as he has overcome and is sat down in his, with his father in his throne. Brothers and sisters, we are a people being prepared. The time is at hand. This is the end of the 70th year. And the 14 years will begin at the year's end. of October 23rd, 50 days after 
the pre-trib bride of Christ. And when that first pre-trib happens, the six the the attack on Haifa and Tel Aviv lasts for seven days. Then it settles. The Lord returns for the eighth day in all of that that I just explained on 9-11. He is here for 40 days. When he's gone at the end of 40 days, there are three days left. And at the year's end, the anointing of the Holy Ghost comes on the 50th day. When that happens and they go out from Jerusalem, the 14 years will begin on October 24th, the new beginning the start of the 14 years, and this will be the attack by Syria and those who are with Syria having compassed Jerusalem about in the warning that the Son of Man was giving for 40 days, they will now be attacked on the true beginning of the year, the true beginning to the Lord God's 14 years at the new beginning. Just as the revelation of the 14 years and the fractal of all of creation had revealed to us. Brothers and sisters, I'll put this link in the description box so you can have it and, and compare it side by side with the Hebrew calendar. Re-listen, study it, pay, uh, spend some time in it, and you will understand that the revelation of we knew it is revealed in the alignment that happens this year in Taurus as it was in the beginning. Isn't that crazy? It is exactly lined up in 2024 where it was not lined up in any of these other previous seven years that we've been doing this, nor will it be for 30 more years to a group that he revealed in the physical through his spirit the revelation to confirm right on target. Now do you understand? Now do you understand the importance and the revelation? We had to understand the seven Sabbath count to get to the 50 that would lead us to the Lord God's year's end. Brothers and sisters, I hope this excites you. I hope it strengthens you. I hope it lifts you up and encourages you. I hope it puts a, a spring in your step as we continue to watch and pray, diligently seek and share. Share it with others. Help prepare others. Even if they don't care and don't want to hear it, they will remember you in a week from now. I promise you, they will remember you in a week from now. And I can't wait to meet each and every one of you, whether it be in the lowest room of the third heaven in a week from now, or whether it be prayerfully ready to serve the Lord girded about, waiting for his return. We will all meet each other very, very soon. I love you so much. God bless you. God bless your families. And we'll see you shortly.